What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode, and I gotta welcome back a guest who, this is now his third appearance on my show. Paulie, what's going on? Dude, third time's a charm. I think I, I think I'm hitting, you know, all my, all my OGs are all getting, like, the third time. This, this so, is, like, I, I think I've done three, three right maybe four <laughs> with Paige. I just did my third with uh, Jacob from uh, Jake's Take. And now here I am with you, man, but I'm big on, you know, people who were there for me all those years ago. We'll st we're still here now. And I love seeing where all of you guys are like now, because I remember like all you guys first starting off and now like seeing how much you've grown. It's like anybody that watches these podcasts and sees me as the third guest, I always like to go back and say, look at where they started. And like this is because I'm big on putting in the work, keeping the discipline and just sticking to something and, you know, seeing where you guys are now is just chef's kiss. Beautiful <laughs> chef's kiss, baby. Well, not only am I welcoming you back to this, I feel like a proper term too, just in like a, in a nutshell would be welcome home because just in like a broad scope here, like when it pertains to being back with the challenge for, for me, like, I've always said it, it's better, like the sh environment, the show is better with you. You know what I'm saying? Like the way you, I've always appreciated the way you've, you know, brought sort of your mentality with the game. You're always like in it to win it and trying to like make moves. And I've always appreciated that. So just in a broad scope, man, like welcome home. Like this, this is, this feels like almost euphoric that we're, this is the first time you and I are speaking now since you've made your comeback. So, yeah, man. And I, and I appreciate that. And I, and I do, I do want to bring that, that, uh, that old schoolness back, uh, to the show. And I'm happy to be back, back home. I feel home. Like when I was away filming and everything, I was like, I couldn't stop telling the producers. I was like, I feel at, at home guys. Like I feel at more peace here than I do in, you know, my real life, not from a sense of like, you know, my real life, it's very peaceful. I love everything I do, but there's just something about being in that environment. Like a lot of people may go in there, get anxiety, get stressed out. I feel like so calm there because you're unplugged from the world. You know what I mean? Like no mm -hmm. phone, no computer, no distractions. I don't got to answer my business emails. I don't got to have business calls. I'm just away and to my thoughts and just totally immersed in the game. And, and it feels good to be home. Well, just peeling back the curtain a little bit, obviously, like in the time you were gone, we know that you put in a lot of work with all your other endeavors that you had going on. You kept like a really positive attitude with everything you were accomplishing on the side. But like, you know, just to kind of give me like a general basis of how you kind of felt like how hard was it for you, like, either emotionally or mentally to be away from, like, almost something that you kind of were building, like, gradually? We saw three seasons, like, off the top of my head, all, three seasons with that big of an impact. You've got to be, like, one of the, you know, bigger impacts made by someone in their first three seasons. And then to kind of, like, take that gap, that – how hard was it for you, like, being away from from it? Man, that was uh, that was hard. Um, it was hard from the standpoint, um, you know, cause I didn't even realize the kind of impact that I made in the first three seasons, right? Like I knew everybody was talking about me. Um, I knew I was doing well on the show, uh, making it to the end. You know, I never got the win that I was looking for, but I, I feel like I was hitting my stride. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I was kind of every season I went in and I got closer and closer and I would just fine tune and tweak. I had all of the castmates exactly where I wanted them, um, you know, from a standpoint of a psychological game. Um, you know, I, I built a great relationship with a core group of people that um, I felt like would have been great um, riders. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I, not to bring it back to like, you know, the old school shows, but like the old school shows when they were at their peak and they were at their best when like there were like almost two separate groups that like were at each other's necks and it wasn't like the whole the whole aspect of ogs and vets sticking together and just going after the rookies going after the rookies like it hadn't really set in yet you know and i feel like that's very boring gameplay um you know it was always you know like johnny and ct and wes like 
they all were kind of playing chess with their own pieces on the board, right? Like, so CT had like his people or, you know, some would say he was a lone wolf for the most part, right? Johnny has his people. Wes had his people. But going into every season, everybody always anticipated who's going to get the one up on the other person. You know, what moves are going to be made? Who's going to, you know, shed first blood? Um, and I kind of felt like that's what I was establishing in my first three seasons was I came in as a lone wolf. Um, second season, I just performed. And then third season is when I really felt like I built those relationships where going into that next season of Total Madness, I think everybody would have been like, oh, now how are the chips going to fall? It's an individual game. Jordan's in there. Theo's in there. Um, you know, Johnny's in there. Uh, Nani's in there. Tori's in there. And then Paulie's in there. Car is in there. Ashley's in there. Cam's in there. Um, how, how is this going to turn out? Who's going to win? Who's going to win that battle? But it would have been a great thing for, I think, fans to see and and relate to. Um, and I feel like that momentum was, was taken from me. Um, and uh, taking the four years off and taking a broader picture scope of things, um, it hurt a lot. Um, you know, it was painful to watch, uh, just because I, I love competing and I love winning. Um, and I love playing the game. Like I love that game so much. Um, and I'm not there for TV time. I'm not there for clout. I'm not there to go in and be like, who should I hook up with? That's going to get me more, uh, you know, more attention and, you know, a better storyline. Who am I going in there and being rivals with? to have a storyline. Um, do, am I just creating arguments just to get camera time? Like everything you saw of me was just raw and authentic. Um, you know, and, uh, it was hard for me to watch kind of like the, the cast in a way, like take it for granted, um, going on the show and, you know, the vacation Alliance was created and, you know, it, it just got to be like everything that made it somewhat stale. Um, I feel like the cast brought it back to making it stale where it's like, Hey, listen, uh, we're all going to be friends guys, because you know, uh, let's get rid of all the new people coming in because they're a threat and you know, we don't want anybody coming in and making an impact and becoming a mainstay. So let's get rid of them and, uh, let's all stick together. And then, you know, we'll eventually go after each other, but we all know that we're going after each other. So we're not really going to get upset about it. Like I think the war of the world's two reunion in itself just showed how much like authentically there was a divide and that people were at each other's throats. Um, you know, so it was, it was hard for me to watch, um, you know, people who complained so much about Cara and I um, just essentially make the show boring um, in a way, you know what I mean? Um, and it, and it hurt because I love the show so much and I love, and I love, and I, and I want to keep pushing the needle forward and I feel as though the time is here where there needs to be like that next generation that's going to carry the torch and carry the torch well. Like that has been the natural progression of the challenge throughout history. Like there was the Mark Long era mm -hmm. and there was that era with like the Mark Longs and the Derek Kays, um, you know, and then transition into the era of like the Durrells, the CTs, the Wesses, the Car Maria, the Laurels, right? All of that. And then... I came in and I felt like there was that group where it was like me and Theo Rogan and, Jordan and Rogan and, um, and then, uh, and, and turbo. Um, and, and then I kind of felt like that was pulled. Um, mm -hmm. it was like here, here's just a bunch of people that get along. Um, but that's just me. And, you know, I'm like, my relationships with those people are different now. So, um, you know, but it's not to say that they go in every season looking to be friends with everybody. It's crazy. No, right. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you, you know, brought up all those points because I think we saw as challenge fans, like we, we saw your last season, you and Kara had your alliance and like had a stranglehold on the game. And I think as fans, because maybe like they weren't so used to seeing like a 
like strategic <clears throat> stranglehold on a game quite like how you guys had. They they thought like the grass might have been greener on the other side. And I feel like in the seasons after that, we've seen like, you know, them try to kind of open overcompensate with like having to go into elimination in order to go into uh to, to qualify for final. And that obviously, as we saw, like didn't I feel produce as good of or compelling of a gameplay as what you guys were doing. And then we've seen, obviously, like you said people kind of are comfortable to where like they feel like they don't have to make moves. Like they'll be like, all right, we're all vets. You know, we're coming back the next season. We just throw in the rookies. It's convenient. Whereas like back in the day, people weren't like with the mindset that, Oh, we'll be back next time. Anyway, next calls are coming out. We'll be around. They were like playing the game, like right now in that moment, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I've appreciated about you on the show. Yeah. I I played every game. And I think this is why I made such an impact because I played every game as if I wasn't going to get called back Mm -hmm. unless I absolutely dominated the game. You know what I mean? And, and like, I I even looked at it and I think part of, you know, being an entertaining challenger and, and understanding the game is knowing how to make the twists enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, I felt like, you know, even watching like the skull twist and how the cast played that, I'm like, so wait a second, everybody's on board when somebody pleads their case to go into elimination and get a skull and is just like, all right, yeah, you, you deserve it. Like, go, good luck, good luck, go get your skull. Like, if I was there and TJ was like, you need a skull to go to the final, and I went in and I got my skull. I would be doing everything in my power to make sure all of my enemies never had a chance to get their skull. Yeah. That way, that way it would just kind of be like, Oh, I'm just going to cause chaos this whole time. And then at the end, there might be eight people that just get purged because they don't have their skull. Like I'll, I'll do that. Like I, like I would have, I would have loved to do that. Or like if, you know, certain people who I didn't like had their skulls, mm-hmm. and like, let's say the group of them, who I might've been working against had their skulls, I would be doing everything in my power to throw them in against each other. Even if there was other people who didn't have skulls, because I'd be like, yeah, no, I don't, I still don't want you guys in the final. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like you like keep going in against each other. Um, you know, and I feel like there weren't like the moments of, of people, you know, like it's intense. It would have been intense if people wanted their skull and like there was a, a fight about yeah. it. And they were like, you know what? I don't have my skull, but I've been arguing with this person all season who has their skull. I want you and I want you in elimination and I'm going to go take that skull from you. Like those, I feel like are peak moments, Um, you know, and and I do think that the fandom in a way had a, had a big um, hand in turning the challenge into, into what it was. Um, I recall every season that I was on, the fans being so upset about what they now cry about is missing from television. I, re- I remember that vividly. Mm-hmm. And I remember castmates would try and play on that. And I just thought it was so weak. And I don't think the fans realized that they were being manipulated by those castmates. But I hope that they can appreciate if that kind of television comes back. Because when I went on the show, I was like, oh, this show was chaos. Fans are going to really appreciate what I bring to the table because that's what the show was built of. And CT is a fan favorite who was known for beating people up and being mm-hmm. an animal. Darrell's a fan favorite who also had his moments. Right. And then, you know, there was the Wes and Johnny's who were fan favorites for their strategy aspect mm-hmm. and their manipulation aspect. So I came in and I was like, man, I'm, I'm like the full package here. I hope fans appreciate it. And all they did was cry about it and try and find reasons to be like, I'm sad. I'm upset. But now everybody reposts old clips and it's like, bring this back, bring this back. And it's like, I still see it when things are happening in like these current seasons and the fans get so upset mm-hmm. about things. And I'm like, don't you want messy television again? I don't know. It feels, it feels like there's like the plot amongst the fans feels kind of lost right now. It feels like they they'll share stuff from the past and say that they want it back. But then if they get like sort of a sliver of what that is, they kind of be like, Oh, we don't want that. Like I, there seems to kind of be like, they can't really find the happy medium right now. 
I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the world we live in where it's like, you know, nothing's ever been done for me lately. You know. Yeah. But also it's like, you know, what it what have you what have you done for me lately? Um, you know, Fessy is a great example of this, right? So I, I like Fessy. Mm-hmm. I think he's a good competitor. I like people who are there that want to win money. I like people who when it comes time to compete, they turn a switch on and they got that dog in them, right? Now, mm-hmm. does he have holes in his game? Yes. But when he would get thrown down into hall brawls or pole wrestles and do exactly what someone his size with the athletic background that he has is meant to do in that situation, fans cry about it. Like when Rogan and Jay had their beef on Total Madness and then they're down in the sand and Mm -hmm. Rogan absolutely demolished Jay. Fans were upset at Rogan for doing exactly what Rogan should have done to Jay. That's where I start to lose it with the fans where I'm like, what actually do you guys want? Because you sit here and you post the bananas backpack clip all the time and saying, uh, the challenge will never be like this. You will post about the pole wrestle between Wes and Derek and between Derek and Joss. Um, you know, you'll post clips of Car Maria's eliminations and, you know, Laurel's eliminations. And you'll be like, the challenge will never get this. It's like, well, why don't you allow the challengers do, uh, to do what they're meant to do? Like, if someone goes down into a physical elimination, you should be cheering for the person that causes absolute carnage when they win. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I understand if somebody's gloating and, and everything, but like, Fessy never gloated. Like he never gloated. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's very confident in his abilities. And I love confidence. I'm a big yeah. confidence guy. Right? Like my whole thing is I'm big Deion Sanders, where it's like if my confidence offends your insecurity, that's your problem, right? But like after Fessy beat Jordan and dislocated his shoulder, he wasn't an asshole about it. No, he's a good sport. Yeah, right? Like Rogan definitely played it up a little bit when he just absolutely dominated Jay, but why not? Why not be that? They person? had actual big conflict with one another. Actual conflict. Like, the, like yeah, I'm sorry, both- but like, you know, and like, I, I know Jay. I like Jay. Mm-hmm. Rogan's my boy. But like, hey, Jay, like, if you're talking that kind of shit to someone like Rogan and then you end up in the sand and something like that, what do you think is going to happen? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the fans shouldn't sit there and be like, oh, Rogan. It's like, no. Rogan did exactly what Rogan should have done if somebody's been talking shit to him all season and then he finally got a physical elimination. When Fessy, um, you know, uh, grabbed onto Nelson's uh, broken finger. I don't think people understand that Fessy comes from Division One football where if you're in the bottom of a scrum for a fumble, you're getting your eyes poked, you're getting, like, hit in the throat if you're holding onto the ball because and people are trying to break your fingers to get your hands off the ball. Athletes do whatever it takes to win, and Fessy's an athlete. And I think that the fandom needs to start embracing people that are there to win. And I know that there's this whole thing of, like, it's not an athletic show. It's called the fifth sport. Mm -hmm. The fan favorites from the past are the people who won consistently. They had the most camera time because they were always winning. The most memorable moments are that of – Chaos that ensued from either leading up to an elimination, the elimination itself, or the aftermath of an elimination, Mm -hmm. right? That mentality needs to come back. I'm not saying we need to cast all professional athletes, but I can promise you this. If you want authentic drama, put a bunch of competitive people in there who want to win. And they don't have to be athletes, but they have to be there to win. And drama will ensue because the pressure of winning money to somebody who's competitive outweighs anything else outweighs any fake storyline outweighs any person that's going in there, like just trying to, you know, get camera time and become a character. The characters create themselves. Mm -hmm. You can't go in there and be like, I'm going to be this character that comes across as inauthentic. And the challenge was really good when people were killing each other over cameras and motorcycles and playstations and, you know, (laughs) <laughs> Not that much prize money, right? Right. And I'm going to put it on the OGs, right? Because I blame a lot of the OGs for the transition because they sit there and they hold on to their resumes for so long of like, oh, back in my day. And it's like, yeah, but you cry and complain 
so much. And when you show up, you're not there for money anymore. You're not there to compete the way that you once were. You're just there to collect your paycheck. Mm -hmm. And it shows, you know what I mean? Like some people show up still willing to win. Like, you know, Johnny shows up ready to win. Jordan shows up ready to win. Car shows up ready to win. Laurel shows up ready to win. CT and Wes, they show up ready to win. Can, can we really say the same about everybody that shows up from an OG standpoint? Right? How many people just show up just to collect their paycheck and they're proud to go and brag on podcasts? I just went to get a vacation and collect a paycheck. That's that's not what the challenge is. I'm sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, what was your like when you were making your return? Um, I think you could both we could both agree here. Your first time around, you were very polarizing. Did you come into this time around your go around thinking like uh, I don't know what people are going to think of uh, this, that, and the third, or like did this reception, because I, for me, at least from what I've interpreted, it almost seemed like you had more of like a, um, almost like more, I don't want to call it a hero arc, but you definitely were like more <laughs> like, I guess, received uh, better this time around than you were the last time we saw you from uh, most of the fans, at least from my interpretation. Yeah. I, I think I, I think I got back to like, um, you know, my roots, like as, uh, you know, as an athlete and, um, you know, I also got back to my roots of like who I am. Um, you know, there was a, I was in the mindset that when I go away, I had to be switched on all the time. So like anything that you saw anytime was me like in athlete mode, like talking smack, like winding people up, like getting in their heads, doing all that stuff. And I love that aspect of it. This time around, I was like, you know what? Let me try only turning it on when I'm competing. So like when the, you know, just be myself, right? Engage with people the way that I would engage with them normally in real life. And then when it comes time to compete, just turn the switch on and you have no friends. When it comes time for an elimination, turn the switch on. You have no friends. If you're ever in a position of power to be able to make a decision, turn the switch on. You have no friends. Right? right. And then play strategy um, from there. But also, you know, I do believe that twists have a big impact on how people play the game. And, you know, before I go into every game, I give myself six or seven scenarios of what the format could be mm -hmm. and then what themes could be in it um, and what twists could be in it. And that's kind of how I gear how I go in and how I play and how I set up the chessboard and going into this season and having that twist of the hopper. Um, I did not prepare for that and it threw away any, any, any strategy that I had and any, any uh, way that I was going to play the game because you really had to just almost sit back and in a way be nice to everybody Mm -hmm. And in a way also, um, you know, uh, focus on your team winning. That was the only way that you were safe, right? Like all it took was one vote. We saw that with Alyssa Lopez. Mm -hmm. um, and I already had a target on my back, um, you know, walking into the house. Obviously, the vets knew me, but everybody from the CBS side, they, you know, I'm walking into a house and people being like, yo, you're a legend. You're a goat. You're the reason why I started loving the challenge, all that stuff. So I finally started to sit there and be like, man, like, you know, because I've been gaslit for three seasons by challengers being like, you're not that good. You're not this. You're not that. And that almost like hardened me mm -hmm. to have like that mindset of like, oh, yeah, you're saying that. Well, I'm going to show you this now. Right. right. And this time around, like I had done so much work on myself going into it. And I was really just trying to focus on winning mm -hmm. and like how to win the big game that um you know when the hopper got thrown in as a twist i was like Psh, it's out of my hands right like i've described it in other interviews where it's like it's like playing chess and then your five-year-old walks up to the board and just smacks all the chess pieces off the board and ruins your whole game mm. you know what I mean? and that's what it was yeah i think for for many people like when it came to you entering the game they initially see you know who's on it and whatever and they immediately would have expected like oh shit this guy's got his work cut out from what's some of the you know the past that you have with some of the people that were going to be there um 
what what did those like conversations look like you know heading into this thing because we obviously saw you um sort of become reconciled with uh josh and bananas of the world um and Dude, kind I'm, of not, I'm, I'm ripping freaking bananas gear right now oh, there we go um, <laughs> honestly i i don't do the whole conversations before the game thing mm -hmm. like everybody was very shocked that i was at the airport um you know and when when spoilers um, you know, shout out to Gamer Vev. Um, when my dude dropped that I was there, um, I got so many text messages from everybody on the cast and like sending me the screenshots of it. And I just didn't respond to him. I really didn't want my game to be tainted um, because I didn't know any of these people. And I didn't want to get myself shot in the foot before I even had a, uh, had a chance. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and it's a new game. And like I said, I've been gone for four years. So like all the relationships that I had built, um, a, none of those people were there, but even if they were there, they've played games with people who like, we weren't aligned with them when we played on war of the worlds too, but they've played a lot of games together since. And you know, they, their relationships may be different with those people. Right. So whereas, Initially, my core group of people that I was working with may have very well stayed loyal to me if we continued doing seasons together and been like, yeah, it's us versus them. Now coming back, it's really would never be a us versus them thing. So now my whole mindset was I need to repair the relationships um, that I've had because it's a new game. And, you know, I don't like holding on to grudges and I don't like holding on to too many things from the past. Um, you know, so the conversations with Johnny was just kind of like, Hey dude, like not coming for you. Um, you know, we're on the same team, done a lot of reflecting on a lot of things. There's areas where I was wrong areas where you were wrong. We don't need to dive into it and rehash old things. Let's just have an understanding that like the past is the past. Right. And the same thing with Josh. Um, and the same thing, like, you know, even when I had conversations with Tori, right. And like, they tried to bring things up like, Oh, what was your problem with me? And you know, they, they all know what my problem with them was the same way I knew what their problem with me was, but I wasn't, you choose what you give your energy to. And I just chose not to give my energy to those conversations and instead pivoted and was just like, guys, we don't need to talk about that. Let's talk about right now. How you guys doing? What have you been up to? Been a long time since I've seen you. You know what I mean? And that's how those relationships really shifted gears. Yeah, I mean, I had to imagine that must have felt like a big weight just being lifted off your lifted off your shoulders because, like, although like <laughs> those stories did shape a lot of those seasons from like that three season stretch, and like us as viewers were accustomed to seeing that, and it did make for good TV. But like, I can only imagine for like a human like perspective, like carrying like the weight of all that, like. To, to, to finally be able to kind of just like pivot off of that must have felt like, you know, very, uh, very relieving because being in an environment like that, trying to play a game and then with all the past shit, like it's kind of useless at that point. Been like well, it was kind of, it, it, this is going to sound weird, but it was a little bit easy for me, right? Because I never really viewed Johnny as a rival of mine. Um, ever, uh, we have had moments in games, but if you really look back on it, um, we didn't really get to play too much on final reckoning. I was in the redemption house. Um, when I got back into the house, him and I were working together, but then he got eliminated right. and then he came back into the house right before the final. And, you know, um, I made the decision to, send him through the electric wires with Tony versus Joss and Sylvia. Um, and once again, if I would have had um, Joss and Sylvia lose that, um, could I have been protected um, for that final elimination? Maybe not. Maybe, right? Maybe he could have tried to pit Hunter and Ashley against Joss and Sylvia because of all the torture that they put him through all season. Um, but looking realistically, and he's a gamer, and Tony's also a gamer, everybody knew Natalie and I were a good team. And you really don't want to run finals with good teams. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I can't really say that I would have been safe, but I could say that by sending him through that wire, I made a decision to leave a very strong team on the table to possibly get eliminated right before a final. Now, I didn't expect to go against them, um, but it is what it is. But then War of the Worlds 1, you know, him and Wes had their beef. I went into War of the Worlds 1 working with Johnny. Him and I made amends in between seasons. Um, he got eliminated early, and then I just played that game the way I played that game, right? And then even coming into War of the Worlds 2, we had another understanding that, like, you know, we we – we were good, um, you know, but that game played out and shots got taken uh, Car Maria's way and I just uh, retaliated, um, you know, by pulling the trigger on him and and then controlling that game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never really viewed him as a rival um, because I never really got to play games with him. He was always right. eliminated early on seasons that I did with the exception of Final Reckoning where it's like we didn't get to play that much. Um, I view somebody like Theo or Jordan, you know, more rivals than anything else because it's like I threw Theo into f- four eliminations yeah. on War of the Worlds 2. I threw Jordan into two eliminations on War of the Worlds 2. They were on the same alliance. I went at them all season. Theo and I had a blow up. Jordan and I were at each other's throats from a competitive standpoint. And I feel like that kind of those kind of rivalries are what make and break the seasons. Mm. You know what I mean? And people like to see that kind of stuff. Did, did you have any idea in that moment with Theo? <laughs> you, I, you know what moment I'm talking about? Like the yeah. War of the Worlds 2 moment? That that moment, that was like a moment in time that like once you got, once the world sees this, this is going to become like meme, meme material, like gift material. Like, did you, <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh, it's, it's all over the place. So once again, this just, this kind of shows the growth aspect of things because that whole blow up, you know, you got, you know, I'm from New Jersey, play sports. I've gotten into a lot of arguments. I've gotten into a lot of fights in my life, right? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that when I want somebody to swing at me, or if I want to get into a fight with somebody, I'm going to kiss them on the lips. Like (laughs) if guys get this close to each other, and nobody's swinging, then I, in my head, I'm like, oh, you don't really want these problems. So I'll kiss them on the nose or kiss them on the lips. And then usually that either provokes them to swing and then we'd get into a fight. And, you know, I, back in my day, I was, I was a little crazy, right? I enjoyed fighting. I was a wrestler. I was an MMA fighter. You know, like I always knew I was going to win the fight. So Mm -hmm. I would provoke the fight. Right. That's what I was trying to do in that moment is he was talking shit. And I wanted to provoke him to start a fight that I was planning on finishing, right? Mm -hmm. And then it ended up just turning into us just, you know, going back and forth, kissing and licking each other. And, you know, (laughs) who knows? Um, You know, and now he he doesn't stop flirting with me, you know. You know, he's always always, always trying to get my attention. Yeah. Um, He doesn't even know. But, yeah, I had no idea. But, you know, that part of me, um, I worked on that, you know. So now it's like. I'd rather just be the guy that just stirs, doesn't really ever get heated and in people's faces. Well, we're talking about working on you. I got to ask because the last time we saw you, you know, your, your training regiment was, you, I believe you said you would start the season like um, on, on the bulkier side to like for the dailies and that like you would gradually lose weight as the season goes on. So that way, like, once the final hits, you're like more equipped to like run long distance more. What what did like the training split look like coming into you know this one? Like what was where was your mindset at? Um, honestly, coming into this one, I I really didn't have too much to prep. I mm-hmm. would say I was definitely you know heavier um, mm-hmm. than than usual. Um, but you know it. An athlete's always going to be an athlete, right? So I knew that going into it, I would probably be in better shape than most of the people there anyway, regardless. Um, as and, and, and I was able to train for it, but in the past when I would train like mentally, right? like when you train, you mentally have to be locked in and be focused on your training. Um, and leaning into this one, I was training, but 
while I was training, I was always either on business calls. I was always answering emails, answering texts. Like I was getting my business prepared, you know, to go away and film for potentially two months. And I've really only had a month and a half of prep work to do that. Um, so I would say from a training standpoint, I trained, but I was very distracted. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and that's why, like when I got there, I was happy to be there. Cause I was like, no more distractions. I'm okay. Right. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. uh, yeah. That's still the game plan. Every time I uh, plan on going away, I'll be coming in thick and leaning out as the season goes on. Do, do you think now that you've had like, cause obviously I'm assuming, um, you know, with managing businesses heading into this one compared to like, you know, your first uh, stint where you did those first three seasons, like you've obviously got like more on your plate now. Do you think now that you've gotten this season out of the way, like you're more like in the future, you would be um, kind of more prepared to kind of juggle all those things? Oh yeah. I mean, that was, this was the trial run, you know? Right. So like in the future, I, I've already got the system in place now where it's just like, you know, if there was a season coming up, I already have like the three month plan, the two month plan, the one month plan of like, all right, guys, um, I'm no longer going to be involved in the business. I've got the people who are going to be overseeing it. And then um, I could then just focus on me mm -hmm. and like my mental. And basically it's like, hey, don't come to me unless it's a fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do yeah. not distract me. Do not talk to me about anything. If it's a fire, we'll schedule a call. Don't blow up text message threads, email threads, you know, make sure it's documented, right? So that we can go back and look at it and, 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 and assess it. But only call me if it's an emergency, um, you know, so those systems are in place. So, you know, looking forward to, you know, the next time I potentially get to go away and compete because, you know, I'll be fully locked in training wise the way that I was for those three seasons. Mm hmm. Well, obviously, you know, we, we're glad that you did return, but if any fans that have paid attention to any of the most recent seasons and what their formats and the themes and the names, all that, they would have noticed that there was one season that happened to have been called Rider Dies, and that would have felt like a seamless return, like almost fit like a glove, right, for you and Carr to, <laughs> to uh, be on that one. W were, were we ever close to seeing you guys on that one? Yeah, we were close. Um, you know, we, we don't know what happened with that, but, um, you know, from a business owner perspective now, right? Like now I kind of put that brain on when I think of, uh, the challenge world and the challenge realm. Um, so ride or dies definitely seemed like a no brainer to, to us and to, you know, everybody else. Um, but there's decisions that happen within the business that people that are lower, you know, in the business, it seems like a no brainer, but me looking at it from the scope above, I see it from a different vision. Um, you know, so Cara and myself, like we're, you know, here, the fans are here, right. You know, and then there's up top and that bird's eye view, um, you know, there's always a plan. Right. And, uh, and as I've gotten into my faith a lot, um, you know, over the past four years, um, the same way God has a plan, um, I feel as though, you know, there's always been a plan um, and it, it just had to make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think it all just kind of worked out the, the way it was meant to, honestly, like seeing you kind of uh, come in and make your return. And now we're seeing her on all the, you know, promotional ads leading up to, you know, her inevitable mercenary appearance on this uh, current season of the flagship series is. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just the, the challenge world is better with you guys in it. Like, I appreciate that, man. And honestly, we, we feel the love and, and we really appreciate it. Like we get so many messages. Um, you know, we see everybody like the, always a topic of conversation. Um, you know, always, always ready. And like, honestly, that like, that means a lot to us. And we really, you know, we missed it and we're happy to be back. Um, you know, and we're happy that, you know, the challenge world, uh, is, is back at its, um, you know, Zen place, uh, with us back in the picture. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask a, a final reckoning question here because I did recently see uh, you on Zach Zach's podcast, um, yeah. and then uh, you 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 spoke sort of about the uh, the money stealing. Um, you, yeah. So you you were gun ho about that about like you would have taken the money. Yeah, 
I would, I would have taken the money. Mm. Um, you know, I, I would have taken the money just from the aspect of, um, you know, a, it's life changing money and B when you make decisions and this is what a lot of people fail, fail to realize in life. Right. Um, you know, when, when I'm involved with people, right? Like I've got my family, I've got my close friends, I've got this, right? Like in my brain, I have that conversation of like, is this person going to be a part of my life forever? Or is this person a temporary person? You know what I mean? Um, and I felt as though that, you know, my partner, although we had a great relationship, um, and although like we worked really well together, you know, and I put a lot of work into that partnership in order to like, you know, mentality train, mentality train, mentality train, um, you know, and then my partner came in clutch in situations that were needed, you know, mistakes got made, um, and things happen, you know, we lost the, the money by like a minute or something mm -hmm. like that. But when making that decision, you know, it was nothing personal. Um, it would have just been business, right? Like it's nothing personal. It's just, I don't really see you in my life five to 10 years from now, but I know what my vision for life is. And that money would go towards my vision, which you're not a part of after X amount of, you know, time, right? So mm -hmm. that's kind of where it's at. Um, you know, I could have had like such an asshole answer and been like, yeah, you know, for all the times that we lost those redemption house eliminations, because <laughs> of her. Um, you know, and yeah, she ran the wrong direction and, you know, we had to try and make a comeback, but that's not it. It was, it was strictly business. Um, you know, and prior to final reckoning, like, you know, we were vendettas. Like we were supposed to be on vendetta. I was supposed to be on vendettas. Yeah. I injured my ankle. The night before but she was going to be my vendetta on vendettas and then it would have made way more sense you know then like we did not have a good relationship leading up to final reckoning we built a great relationship on final reckoning um you know and and that's it like i'm not i, I would not sit there and be like oh you know we had a great season i'm now emotionally invested in this no it's a business decision you know what i mean and I think that that's where a lot of castmates get caught up is they get like emotional and it's like, none of you are actually friends. You're not. That, that, that's such like, um, like a, a real like answer. You know what I mean? Like when like actually thinking about that amount of money, like the two times that we've seen somebody steal, you know, money, let's just say, you know, in bananas, case, it was stemmed off of kind of like a past game move. And then in Ashley's case it was more of like a personal one. Whereas like yours was you know, if let's just say you were in that position would have been more from like, just like, a, oh, no, I don't, I don't have anything really against you. I'm just kind <laughs> of like logistically thinking about where I see things in the future. And like, this is just kind of how it's, you know, going to shake out. I'm sorry. but <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, th I think that's where I get into issues with a lot of castmates, or at least I did in the past is because I would make very matter of fact decisions. There'd be no emotions attached to them. Very matter of fact. And, you know, just like Zach said, Zach's like, you could be sleeping in a room with this guy, like next to him, laughing, giggling, and then the next day a decision gets made and, like, you're, you're cut. You're thrown into an elimination and it's it. It's, it's because that's just how I am, right? In athletics, you have to be that way, right? Like sometimes your, your best friend is sitting on the bench. Sucks. But what are you going to do? feel bad, take away from your performance. And now you're both sitting on the bench together, right? Like, or you can try and get them to get off the bench, right? By motivating them and stuff like that. But like, you know, if you're both getting drafted, I care about what my signing bonus is, not what my friend's signing bonus is. And in business, same thing. I, I can't afford to make decisions emotionally, right? I look at the logistics. I take a risk analysis. I, you know, factor in my gut a little bit. And then, boom, I make the decision, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, there doesn't need to be an emotional decision. It would just be like, hey, listen, you know, I love you to death. It's been a really great season. I'm keeping the money, <laughs> you know? I, I could do more with it for myself than splitting it with you. You know what I mean? And it's just oh. that. And, like, I'm, I, a lot of people 
try to care or justify their reasons for doing things based off of how other people are going to react. I don't. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to how I deliver information, that's your problem. It's not my problem. You know what I mean? Right. Well, obviously, you know, on this season that you did make your return, you kind of let let the audience um, sort of peek behind the curtain a little bit when, um, you know, you came forward as, um, you know, obviously being bisexual. Did you, did you go in with, like, the intention, like, you know what, I kind of want to talk about this and sort of maybe I could serve as sort of like a, uh, a beacon for somebody watching this? Or was that moment of you coming out just happened organically? Um, that happened organically. Like, I'm not going to lie, like, you know, in a lot of, in a lot of the soul searching and the work that I did on myself in the time off, I had always known that like, you know, cause here's the thing in high school, I didn't have to really hide it. Right. Like what, you know, like I just went about my life and that was it in college. Definitely didn't have to hide it. When I lived in New York, definitely didn't have to hide it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, going on national television in big brother, I like got scared shitless about like, just like talking about that for like reasons that I've broken down with, you know, at this point with my therapist as to why. And then I kept it a secret this whole time just because of those same reasons. Um, and I had no intention of going in there and, uh, and talking about it, um, at all. Um, but something that I talked about with my therapist all the time was like, why don't you talk about it? Right? Like, why don't you talk about it? Because you're, you're always the first person to say, Hey, I want to be a motivating piece for people. Right? So when you talk about mindset and you talk about motivation and you talk about discipline and you talk about leading by example, what makes this any different? Right? Like, you put information out there on social media all the time in the hopes that you help just one person, right? So like when I'm trying to get people to get on a fitness routine, a diet plan, you know, get their mindset right, all these things, I'm just hoping to impact one person to change their life. And that's an amazing thing. Um, they're like, why can't, what is keeping you from applying this to this? Like you wanted to be an athlete and you wanted to be a professional athlete because you wanted to inspire as well, other athletes to work hard and become athletes. Why are you putting a blocker on your brain when it comes to this? Don't you think that it could help people in your same situation, having the same kind of turmoil that you've had over all of these years? Like, you know, cause we dove back into like when I was in high school when I was in college and all that stuff, like I was, I was, you know, happy all of the time like all of the time. And it's cause I was just living freely, living my authentic life. And then it's like slowly over time being on television, like I was unraveling mm -hmm. and we connected that piece. It was like, this is the piece that is unraveling you. Why are you going to let it keep unraveling you? Like by keeping it a secret. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's ultimately like what, <clears throat> you know, force me to do it. And, and like, the thing is you go in there saying, I'm not going to talk about it, but then you're in the interview rooms and you know, they're talking to you and asking questions like what's been going on these past four years. What, you know, why are you, why do you seem lighter? Like, why do you seem like in a better headspace and everything? Like, what was I going to do? Like lie? You know what I mean? Like I had already lied. Um, on so many seasons where they were like, why are you so angry? You know? And I was, and I always like had a different excuse or a different reason, but I knew the reasons why I was like so angry, you know? And like, what was kind of festering in there? Um, you know, so this time around I was like, I'm going to break the cycle and I'm just going to be honest. Um, because I was not honest all these other times. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm glad that I did because, and, that's not to say that like I didn't have anxiety mm -hmm. after I talked about it. I and not to say that I didn't have anxiety, you know, after having the conversation with Tori and that I didn't have anxiety all those months leading up to when the show was going to air. And that I also didn't have anxiety leading into when that was going to air or if it was even going to make air. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like 
But then once it happened, I like had such a weight lifted off of my shoulders that I was like, Oh, so this is, this is what it feels like to be back in that, you know, cause I missed that version of myself, you know, like for 10 to 15 years, like I missed that version of myself. I was always trying to be like, I just want to go back to being just happy all the time, successful, happy, no chip on my shoulder, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And just executing every day to better myself with no hatred as to why I wanted to do things. Like I was always working towards something and becoming successful at something because I always wanted to be like, yeah, I want to stick it in this person's face. I want to shove it in this person's face. I want to prove this person wrong. I want to do this. And that's not how I was as an athlete. I was always like, I'm doing this for me. I love the sport. I love the process. I love everything that comes with the lifestyle and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. I, I'm like, what do I really want out of this? I want to win. Yeah. Well, I can't win if I'm like having a chip on my shoulder. You know, mm-hmm. I need you need a certain level of chip, but it needs to be like a self motivated chip. You know. Right. Well, I think like with the whole helping thing, I think because like, like you said with, um, you know, fitness and nutrition and helping those in that aspect, I think because it's, you're helping them with something like internal and personal for for them, but with, with you, um, with wanting to come out, I think maybe before coming out, like you felt like almost like a blockage, like you didn't want um because it was sacred to you it was almost like that wall went up before um you know coming out like it was almost like that willingness to let others kind of (coughs) uh a little bit more into you do you think that was maybe your hesitance at first Mm, i i think it kind of stems to the environment of the uh of the challenge house Mm -hmm. um and how everybody is looking for something, right? To try and throw you off um, your game. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I had done enough work on myself to maybe let it out. Um, Where like, if somebody maybe made a sly comment or anything like that, like it could have thrown me over the edge. Like, you know, if we're diving back to, you know, me in high school and in college, like if people, you know, like people, you know, they had an idea, but they didn't really like, no, no. Cause I never really like fully said it. But like when people would, um, you know, use certain slurs, um, towards me, um, I would absolutely snap and I would, Mm. and I would, you know, obliterate those people. Right. So like I knew that aspect of myself and I was like, man, what if I like open up about this here and then somebody, you know, uses that and now I'm snapping on national television to a point of no return. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, So there was a lot that weighed into it. Um, And, uh, and I just finally was able to fix that aspect of myself that, um, you know, had that reaction for when things went on. So I was okay with whatever the response was going to be. And I think once I got to the point of being okay with whatever the response was going to be, that's when I was ultimately like, I don't care. And and it's a truly freely freeing thing when you can just openly be like that. No, and I'm glad that you did share. Well, one, like obviously for you, like personally, but, but two, um, because like, I think like for you giving people that like more, uh, you know, human relatable relatability aspect to you, like they're able to like now even more like, gravitate towards you the person like you know what i mean so like when you inevitably get that championship because i know it's gonna come you know it's gonna feel that much sweeter for them the audience. man i i dream about it every day um you know and when that moment comes um you know it's gonna it's gonna be i think it's gonna be amazing um i i want to say for myself first Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I'll have earned it and, you know, I know all the blood, sweat and tears that I've put into it. Um, you know, but now for everybody who I've become like a, like a beacon, you know, of inspiration for, um, it's going to be amazing, um, for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, who knows who's going to watch and say that they can accomplish something, um, as well and, and relate. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of where my head's at now with it. And I, 
look at it from a perspective of, you know, how many people can I help? Um, and it feels good to kind of be on that path. Yeah. Well, we got 39. That's Aaron right now. Um, but like for you, like in terms of like your ideal, uh, next step within the challenge world, like if you, if you could have it your way, like, you know, whether it be returning to the flagship next, maybe it's another USA, maybe even an all-stars, let's just say, what, yeah. what would be, well, <laughs> yeah, at this point, um, what would be like your, uh, ideal next step for you within the challenge world? You know, um, I'm just going to put it out there because, you know, who cares? Um, I want it all. You know what I mean? Like, I want it all. And I think a lot of people are afraid to say that um, because they're afraid of being viewed a certain way um, or being told that they need to slow their roll or humble themselves and everything. But no, I want it all. Like, I want to be on every single season. Um, I want to go for every single record. I want to go for everything, right? Because when my time's done, the only way I'll have zero regrets is if I left everything out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and wherever the chips fall, right? No matter how many championships I have, how many elimination wins I have, how many daily wins I have, um, you know, I want to know that whatever that number is, I left it all out there on the field. So I want it all. Um, I want to be on every season. Um, and I want to win as much as I can. And I want to perform as best I can. And I want to entertain everybody that watches the show. And I want um, when people talk about the greats, I want my name in there. When people look back on people who push the needle forward for the show, I want my name to be in there. And those are just my goals and those are just my dreams. And, you know, if people don't like that or feel like that's coming off a certain way, well, they're not your dreams. They're mine. And, you know, eventually, eventually, the, the, eventually the greats are going to, you know, not be there anymore. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a new generation of greats for people to be able to relate to and, uh, and, and latch on to. Um, you know, and, and I, and I'm, and I definitely want to make the push for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think you would have fit perfect on even 39 too. I mean, you know, with all these people trying to become a new champion here, we I don't have a new champion. Come on, get me in there. I mean, we got Corey lay right now making all like the moves on the guy's side, but I feel like you could have seriously given like this, this male side, like a real big jolt, uh, you know, from a, want a competitive standpoint but just playing the game man like i we need we yeah. need more males on the flagship that aren't afraid to make moves like like they don't have like i'm not talking just like fights and all that shit. like i'm just talking like strictly like play the game say and like literally say a name like put someone into eliminate like to the, it's yeah. gotten to the point man like a lot of people are just so even scared to just nominate somebody on this season yeah, it's yeah, it yeah, I I you know yeah I I don't even know what to say about the, yeah, no. the men. I don't even know what to say about the men who are who are doing that because I I don't think that they realize the opportunity that this season gave them. Right, you talk about and you know how three seasons I came in and I made an impact you know, a very big impact, an impact that maybe not many people have ever made in three seasons. I did that with characters like Johnny Bananas there, CT, Wes, um, Jordan, Jordan, right? Like these are some of the greats to ever play and the storylines are always around them. And I was able to make an impact with those people on the seasons with me. If you ever came to me and you said, hey, Polly, you're going to do a season, and guess what? It's going to be all new people and all people who have never won. And I didn't seize the opportunity to separate myself from the group as like, a, as like the best yeah. in every aspect. Um, I don't, I don't. I don't think you deserve to be on the show. Right. 
And that's just my honest opinion about it. Because it's like these guys are there. <clears throat> these guys are there. There are no other big personalities there from a male standpoint. And they are all falling short on being memorable at all. Right. Like for me, I like, I like personally, like I know um, he, he had a big episode this week, but at least Corey, Corey Lay, he's like actually at least trying to play the game. Like he's playing like, you know, I haven't like, watched 39. So I, you know, right. I just, I see right like the clips I see on social media and like, you know, you don't have to watch the episodes to know mm -hmm. if somebody's doing something, you know what I mean? Like, right. If you never watched the challenge on the three seasons that I was on, you knew I was doing something because social media was wild. Mm -hmm. It was on fire. You know what I mean? People from networks and shows that I didn't even know about talking about me, <laughs> talking about the challenge, bringing eyes to the show that had never been on the show. What new eyes are these people bringing, you know, by being boring? You know what I mean? Because if something, if you, if, if people are talking about you online, well, eventually it's going to come across people to be like, man, what is this? What is this show that everybody's talking about? The challenge, you know, like a, a lot of people know about the challenge, but like, if you're there and you're not causing anybody to say, what is this show? The challenge, let, maybe I'll start watching it. What are you <laughs> even doing there? Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it was a pleasure having you back on here, man, and catching up with you. Uh, this this was I'm I'm so glad that we were able to do this now, um, in like a setting in which you're like you're back. Like I'm so glad that we're I'm able back, to baby. Yeah, <laughs> we planned it this whole time. I'm back. Just the way we drew it up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We you know we put it out there. We manifested it. Mm -hmm. All right, man. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you, and and I, I love seeing all the success you've had, man. Like I've see I see all the guests that you pull on, and you're constantly pumping these out, man. So keep it up. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. All right, it. man. Best of luck. Thank you, bro.